What's going on guys? Dante's Boxing Nation. And today I want to talk about Nonito Donaire versus Guillermo Rigondeau. This is a great matchup. This fight is almost two years in the making. If you guys have been watching my previous videos, I've been putting a lot of pressure on Donaire along with other people like Max Kellerman and and all the other people, a lot of people on YouTube, etc. I've been putting a lot of pressure on Donaire to take this fight with Guillermo Rigondeau. Rigo was the 122 pound division champion before Donaire even moved up to 122. So, you know, logically, it made no sense for, for um, Donaire to not want to take this challenge. But all that's behind us now. Donaire, he did his share of ducking. He tried to avoid this fight. And, he, you know, he, he could only do it for so long. And now the fight is finally made. All right, now let's go ahead and get into this breakdown. Now, for those of you who really know about boxing inside out, and, and you're not just being biased and just, you know, being dictated by your personal love or hate for someone, then you would already know that technically, Rigo is a far better boxer than Donaire. He, he's, he's a far better boxer than Donaire. Better defense, better accuracy, you know. I mean, he, he's, the last couple of fights, he's actually had more knockouts than, than Donaire. That alone doesn't really mean anything, but that's just another attribute that, that we can bring up in contrast of both fighters, right? Now, if this was an election, Rigo would already be projected. He would already be projected as the winner, but it's not an election. And, it's, and, and you can't really go off of 100% off of logic because one punch can change everything, right? See, this is the thing with Rigo, and this is what people are, are, are looking at and they're questioning. A lot of people want to question Rigo's chin. They, you know, a lot of people saying, oh man, look what happened to him against Marikin. And then you have some people that are saying he looked terrible against Marikin and he got hurt, wobbled, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you, so right there, you, you know, comparing Rigo's chin to Donaire's chin, a lot of people would automatically say Rigo doesn't have a chin. That automatically means that Donaire, as hard as he, as he punches, He's going to beat Rigo. But see, when it comes to looking at the chin and everything, I think that's a double-edged sword. I really do. And the reason why I say that is because you have to look at it both ways. We've already seen how Rigo responds when he gets wobbled, when he gets hurt. You know, when he fought in the, in the first of all, the Marokin fight, it was a very, very impressive victory. I mean, I I don't know if you guys have, have watched that fight more than one time or if you watched it at all. But the American fight, I've, I've seen the fight about five times already because I like to review fights and really, really get a good insight. You know, it's just like watching a movie. You, you know, you watch it the first time, you watch it the second time, you find out there were little things that you didn't pay attention to and you missed. That's how it was when I seen the Rigo versus American fight. People have to understand, and, and a lot of people are just casual fans, they don't understand, first of all, Roberto American, he has... And a very impressive amateur pedigree, okay? He has a very, very a long, impressive boxing record, you know, as an amateur. He, he defeated, he defeated uh, Rashid, uh, no, not Rashid, he, he defeated Gary Russell in one fight. I mean, uh, Gary Russell did come back and beat him twice, but still, he has a win over Gary Russell, okay? He has a win over Adrian Broner. And he was being he was being groomed as a future star in the sport when he ran into the brick wall we all call Guillermo Rigondeau, right? So, like I said, he was he was about four or five inches taller than Rigo. He was much he was much more naturally bigger than Rigo. He had everything going for, going for him. He was a lot younger, and you know, outside of Rigo being staggered. Rigo won every single round, and he played with he played with Roberto American. Okay, so you know, like I was saying though, going back to um, I kind of went off what I was trying to the point I was making. The point I was making is when when you talk about having a chin, it's a double edged sword. We know how Rigo will respond 
when he gets hit with a good shot. He was relaxed. He was calm. He got back into the fight. He didn't fall. He didn't start running for like two, three rounds because his confidence was no longer there. He was relaxed, and he continued to do what he did, right? Now, with the, the fact that, that uh, we all look at Nonito Donaire as having a great chin, which he does have a great chin, and his chin probably is better than Rigo's, but what we don't know is how does Rigo respond when he gets hurt? Because he's never been hurt before, or at least not to where we could actually tell by watching the fight. So we don't really know how he's going to respond. Is he going to be relaxed like Guillermo was against American? Or is he going to panic, you know, like, like De La Hoya did when he fought against Corte and he got knocked down? And it took De La Hoya about two or three rounds to get, to get his confidence back and get back, you know, on, on path, Right. I mean, we really don't know how uh, Donaire is going to respond. All right? That's one thing you have to look at. Now, another thing that we have to look at is the fact that, like I said in many of my videos, Donaire's incredible lack of defense. Okay? If you look at his last four fights, Donaire, he gets hit at will. There is not one punch that he really, really avoids. And when I say there's not one punch, I don't mean he gets hit with every single punch. What I mean is uh, Nonito is a type of fighter, if you catch him with a good right hand, you can keep catching him with good right hands the entire night. He's not that type of you know, extremely smart, intelligent fighter where they get caught with a good punch maybe once or twice, and then they learn from it, and then it's, it's almost impossible to hit them with that punch repeatedly since they've already learned how to avoid it. Donaire does not learn this. He gets hit with the same punch over and over. Okay? So I think that's a tremendous downfall for him against a fighter who is such an accurate puncher like Rigo. Okay? Rigo, he has an impressive jab, he has a, an impressive jab, which he which he really, really, you know, put on um I'm sorry, which he really displayed when he fought against Marican. And what was so funny is he Rigo was out jabbing Marican, and Marican was about four or five inches taller than Rigo. Alright? He's a southpaw. He has a tremendous left hand. He has a tremendous left hand to the body, to the head. And like I said in many videos before, Rigo is not like Manny Pacquiao with his left hand, where Manny Pacquiao, you know, his best left hand is straight down the pipe, you know, to the head. That's really all Pacquiao does with his left hand. It's straight down the pipe. You know what's coming. That left hand is coming straight to your face, right? But with Rigo, he can, he can dominate you with that left hand in many different ways. He throws it in every different way. He uses the left hand to throw the uppercut, the, the, the hook, the straight to the head, the straight to the body, which knocks out a lot of opponents for Rigo at least. It's something that you rarely ever see you hardly ever see people get knocked out with straight punches to the body. You know, you normally see someone get knocked out with a hook to the body or something like that. Or maybe a little small uppercut to the body. But you seldomly see people get knocked out with straights to the body. And Rigo has knocked down and knocked out a lot of fighters and good fighters with that straight left to the body. So there's many different ways that this fight can play out. But every time I play this fight out in my head... I see Rigo easily outboxing Donaire for the most part of the fight. Now, here's one scenario that can possibly, you know, take place. Rigo can come out. He can already establish his, his dominance and his boxing ability. He's starting to outbox Mr. Donaire, right? After about three, four rounds, or even earlier, Donaire catches Rigo with his favorite hook. And he hurts and he knocks out uh, Rigo. Or he just knocks him down and knocks him down a couple times. And Rigo, he loses confidence and he starts, you know, thinking about nothing but survival, uh, a survival. And maybe he either gets knocked out or he goes, he goes 12 rounds in a stinker just trying to survive. Now, that's one scenario. That's one way that this fight can play out, right? 
Now, there's another, uh, another way this fight can play out, and I think this scenario is a little bit more realistic. Rigo can go in there, and he can completely outbox Donaire. And by the third, fourth round, uh, kind of like Corrales started to get frustrated with Mayweather, Donaire can start to get frustrated with Rigo. And in, 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 in return, Donaire starts to give Rigo an enormous amount of respect so much to the point where he's no longer punching, and I can envision seeing Donaire fans watching the fight saying, come on, Donaire, why, why aren't you punching? Come on, you need to punch, Donaire. And they don't understand why he's not punching, and it's because Donaire has got a taste of that Rigo accuracy and power. Why do you guys think Donaire is demanding Olympic-style drug tests for Rigo only and only Rigo? Like I said, there's nothing wrong with him demanding the test, but the fact that he demands it just for this fighter in particular, it tells you that Donaire already respects Rigo to a certain extent. Just like Floyd Mayweather, he respected uh, Manny Pacquiao's power to a certain extent. That's why he wanted that test, because he thought this fighter in particular had, tre had tremendous power. Okay? So, I can see the fight playing out that way. I can see Donaire getting frustrated. And, and eventually, he doesn't punch anymore. He starts to lose a lot of rounds like that. The more frustrated he gets, the more he starts to make mistakes. He starts to get desperate. And, and if you know about boxing, you know when you start to get desperate and you start to get frustrated, that is a terrible combination. And a lot of times, a combination like that, it ends in a knockout. So I could see, Donate, I could see Rigo possibly stopping Rigo in, in, in a, a couple different ways. You know, I could see him stopping him with that straight to the body. I could see him knocking Rigo down a couple times with the straight to the head. You know, um, so basically, long story short, when it comes to me, I see this fight being dominated by, by Rigo. I see him being, I see him dominating Rigo. I see him outboxing him. I, I see, realistically, I, I would say somewhere between maybe six and ten rounds, I see Rigo possibly even knocking Donaire out. I see him either knocking him down, knocking him out, or a technical knockout. I wouldn't even be surprised if I see Rigo quit on a stool. I mean, there's a couple different ways, but the, the bottom line is, I see Rigo winning this fight. Of course, straddled by him being knocked out by Donaire. Because, like I said, there's also a possibility that Rigo can outbox Donaire and go ahead and get caught with a clean-ass hook and just be out for the count. That is possible. All right? I, you know, I, I believe Rigo's best, Donaire's, I believe Donaire's best chance in this fight is the lack of professional experience that, that Rigo has. I, you know, I, I believe, if, truly, I believe that if Don, Rigo had about 20-plus fights, I, I believe that Rigo, he wins this fight hands down. I think the fact that Rigo had to rush his career because he started, you know, he started as a pro really late in his career, I, I think that gives Donaire his best chance of um, winning this fight. But if, if I'm forced to bet, I, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going with Rigo. So that's how I see this fight, guys. Rigo outboxing Donaire easy, possible late stoppage between 6 and 10. All right, so go ahead and um, you tell me what you guys think about the fight. I'm on to the next one, guys.